Welcome to In a Prosecco, the podcast that raises a glass to moms who are transitioning from empty nester into the next beautiful phase of life as a free bird. I'm your host, Bernie Slowey. I'm a mother of two sons who have grown and flown, and I'm also a former corporate executive, filmmaker, writer, speaker, and entrepreneur who has helped women transfer into their authentic selves to uncork their infinite sparkling possibilities. So whether you're sipping a Prosecco or your favorite beverage of choice, join me as we pop open today's message in a bottle. Welcome and welcome back to those who have been following the podcast in a Prosecco. Appreciate you coming and I'm really always appreciative of your comments and your likes. Be sure to subscribe. And today I have an Zoom interview with Dr. Caitlin, who I met in Denver, Colorado. Hello, Dr. Caitlin. Good morning. Nice Good, to see you. Nice to see oh. you. <laughs> I wish you were in the studio with me. I know. I wish I were too. Yeah. I really wish I could have seen you before you left, but I'll just come visit you next time you're here. Please let me know. Yes, absolutely. Well, and as I've shared with um, viewers about moving to Florida was very much a, a last minute thing because we realized that the big purge that we did um, for three weeks, I didn't want to do it again. And um, it's part mm -hmm. of the transition, right? Like realizing in the process and so I want to talk about you and your background and your wonderful transition story. So tell us a little bit more about you as I pop the bottle to see what the message is. And always my favorite part, pouring the truth serum. <laughs> and I believe you also have your glass. I do right here. All right. We'll do a quick toast okay. to you and the new year. Oh, yeah. 2024. Cheers. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Mm, mm. Yummy. Okay. Well, so tell us about yourself. So um, which part of my story would you like to hear? Because there's a lot. Oh, uh, well, let's start with uh, your, what, you, what do you do? So I'm a gynecologist. I work in women's health. And so I take care of women and people with uteruses. Excellent. <laughs> and you are a mother. I'm a mother. Yes, I'm a friend. I'm a mother. I'm a professional hula hooper on the side. I um, I love to cook and travel. Um, I was married for um, 16 years together for 18. I got divorced in 2010. And so that began my time of having only half time with my daughter. Yes. In 2010. Well, I appreciated you reaching out when you learned about the podcast to give that perspective mm -hmm. as an empty nester through divorce because mm -hmm. as many of my friends that have told me, you know, alternating weekends felt like empty nesting. Exactly. It did. I felt like I had a preview of what is my life when I don't have my child living at home all the time. And I have like freedom because she's really just gone and at her dad's and we didn't really have much contact because I wanted them to have their time together and not be intruding. And then it gave me all this space to learn more about me and what do I enjoy and just really be in the flow of, of life and rediscover myself who I am as a not married person. And then also just all my joys and passions outside of work and outside of my child. You know, when we talk about empty nesting and the empty nest syndrome, there's an element of loss of identity because as moms, as a parent, we put so much of our identity into that role as the children grow up and then when they leave, there's this self-identity crisis, am I still valid um, in that perspective, you know, regardless of career or what else um, is, you know, on our day-to-day -day basis. But when you shared, hey, I was that empty nester every weekend. So talk a little bit about that and how you, first and foremost, how you informed your daughter about the decision of divorce and then how you made the arrangement so that um, whatever amount of time that you would share. Yeah. So, um, so I let my husband know that it just wasn't working and it wasn't going to, and there was nothing more we could really do. And so I needed to like, you know, separate and, um, and then we let her know. And um, that wasn't a very pretty part of the story. So I'm actually going to leave that out. Um, but basically she realized pretty quickly um, 
that she it was going to be okay somehow. And so there's something I want to circle back to about what you said, actually, which is um, that I never really identify too much with any of my roles, like even being a doctor or being a mother or being anything. I don't, that's not who I am. I am just me as a, you know, love and light person. And then I have my roles, but that's not my identity. Mm -hmm. Because if I attach my identity to those things, if they're not that, then that gives me an identity crisis and I don't want an identity crisis. Um, I think I learned that when I was a cheerleader in college and I tore my ACL and then I wasn't a cheerleader anymore. I felt like I had no value. I'm like, who am I? I'm like, I am a cheerleader. And, and then I was like, no, that is not who I am. Nothing that I do is who I am. I am just Caitlin, I'm me. And all these things are super important. They have the same value. They're just not who I am. That's a wonderful philosophy because it's not about so much who am I with what I'm doing. It's who am I with who I'm being. Exactly. And and that's probably more of a an insight to be able to help people through these difficult transitions that it's not about what we do because anything can happen, right? Life changes mm -hmm. and that's part of our experience. Uh, in this lifetime. And so it, rather than seeing things that are going to disrupt your life, seeing it more about, you know, hey, like I, I really enjoy that perspective, Caitlin. And seeing is more about I'm a being of light and how am I going to show up no matter what the circumstances? Yeah. Doesn't matter what my role is. I can just go live on the beach in Mexico. Does that change my value or my identity? Well, and even the you label, know. when we say empty nester. Exactly. Right Until you said, yeah. well, wait a second. Some people are doing this beforehand. So go back to sharing um, once you told your daughter and she shared the news. So we we made an arrangement so that it was equal 50-50. And um, we did the 5-2-2-5, which is like everybody has, or he and I both had equal weekdays and equal weekends. And we just rotated like that. And so we just had to coordinate, you know, how are we going to do this with pickups and drop-offs and um, we just kept it really simple between the two of us and um, and it worked out beautifully. And, um, and she she did well. I mean, it wasn't easy, but we, we had a conscious intention to have like the most kind, compassionate um, parting that we possibly could just to soften it on all of us really. Um, so it took like three months. We we really navigated it beautifully and I'm very proud of how we how we went through that process. There was no, really no unkindness. And so it was very, it was more like the transition of like, now I'm on my own and in my own home and I don't know exactly what I'm doing with anything, but I'll figure it out and I'll hire someone or I'll ask someone if I don't know. So I had to pick up a lot of new skills because I didn't, I ran my part of the household, but I did not run the other part. And so I felt like, you know, pretty lost and um, it was challenging, but I learned a lot and I figured stuff out. Well, when you say you learned a lot, what did you learn? Um, like I learned how to like install thermostats and how to change air filters and how to um, like how many glasses and plates and dishes do I need and what colors do I like? And, you know, for like building my own home, I got to start over and just look at like, well, what do I actually like on my own without anybody else's opinion? And I figured out I have my own whole style. And once I started following like, oh, I love that. This lights me up. I started following my joy is what happened. Like, so in my transition, I'll, I'll circle back to that in a second. In my transition, I knew I'm leaving this situation and what do I want going forward? And I want peace, joy, and freedom. And anything that has any combination of those, I'm going towards that. If it doesn't feel like that, I will let it go and move on. Um, and so I would go shopping and look for like, ooh, yay, when I get that little, you know, energy forward, I'm like, that's it. And um, and there are a few things I tried, like I bought some knives at Costco. They weren't great. I took those back and I got some Sir Top knives and I still love them 10 years later. <laughs> so <laughs> following my bliss does work. When we were talking about empty nest syndrome, I I don't really identify as an empty nester because I, again, I'm not a huge fan of labels and like putting myself, now I'm an empty nester. What does that really mean? And it feels kind of sad. And like, now I'm like in this group of people and it feels like a box. And I don't really love boxes or labels like that because how I see it is my daughter went to college. It doesn't mean anything about me. It doesn't give me a new label. I'm still a, I'm still a mom. And she went to college and that's great. They're supposed to fly the coop, you know? And so I guess technically I don't have anybody at home living with me anymore. So I, I, I get it, but I'm also like, it doesn't change. It doesn't change me. It's just 
how I live my life going forward um, to myself. And like, I get to be super choiceful about what I want to create and what I'm contributing and lots of internal listening and then following through on myself. As you do that, you're being an incredible role model for your daughter. Thank you. Yes. I feel like I am. It's more about your actions and because you can talk about it, but if your actions aren't there, they're paying attention to the actions. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why it matters that we're in alignment. Our thoughts, behaviors, and our actions, if they're not in alignment, they're going to feel that lack of integrity. And then it's very confusing. And so it's my job to make sure that I am in integrity all the time. How old was your daughter when you went through divorce? 10. 10 years old. And she's how old today? She'll be 21 in May. Ah, she she can be toasting too. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) With that, cheers. (laughs) Yeah, so I'm going to take her to Mexico. (laughs) What a great celebration. That'll be so much fun. But you've had now 11 years. And with your daughter being 21, she went off to college. Yeah, she went off to college at 18. She's a junior. So really, as you were saying, not only were you not putting a label on yourself, but you already had time away from your daughter every other weekend. When she left for college, how was that for you in more of that free bird mentality, right? With yeah. No labels, but so the mentality and again, that beingness of like, now I have just set a bird free. And mm-hmm. what did that mean for you? Um, I mean, she lives nearby, only an hour and a half away, and I do get to see her every week or two. So I think that does make it easier that I get to still spend time with her. And I'm not, I think had she moved across the country, it would have been much more painful because we are really close and I would have missed her tremendously. And I would have worked it out. It would have been okay, but it would have been painful. And so it's not nearly as painful. We talk on the phone, we text, we, you know, I'm in touch with her. Um, But what it meant for me was really, I was actually feeling, even though I had her half time, I felt like I want more time to myself. So when she moved out, um, I had my life just filled in with all the other things I'm doing anyway, just more of the same because I love what I've created. And so it's not, I didn't have to add anything else new in because I've known she's going to go away. And so I need to prepare. I prepared years in advance. What do I want my life to be outside of my child? Because she's not my life. She's not, you know, she's who she is, but I have to have me in my life too, um, because she's going to go. And it's actually part of why I got divorced was that I realized we have nothing to talk about. We're not connecting. And what are we going to do when she's gone? All we talk about is her. And I mean, there were other things too, but that was a part of it. And um, so I have a very full life. I still have more. I still feel a little cramped. Like I have so much that I want to do and create that there doesn't feel like there's enough time. (laughs) <laughs> I, I always say that too, like I figure, you know, that making the most of it now because there's more years behind me than ahead of me. So yeah. to, to really embrace the, the days, the hours, and what you said also about when you felt like there was already this practice of sorts, so that when she went off mm-hmm. to college, you were already in that mode of like, well, I am living my life. Mm-hmm. I think that's the example that is the best example that you can serve for your daughter that just as you said, she's my daughter, but you know, I'm my own person and I have to create my own happiness. Cause if I don't do it, I am the example and she needs to, she needs to see that and I'm living, not just the words about it, but like she witnesses my full life and it's, and it is inspiring. It's inspiring to her friends. It's inspiring to my friends. I didn't, I'm not trying to be inspiring. I'm just like living wholeheartedly and like full out because this isn't a dry run or dress rehearsal. We are here for it and we need to just live and maximize and enjoy. It's a rare opportunity that we get. And so I just think we should do it. Amen to that. I'm going to toast in that one too. (laughs) Cheers. Cheers. (laughs) (laughs) Living full out. (laughs) Mm. And it's being authentic, right? It's being who you are and unapologetically. And with doing that, so how, tell me, because what is so cool is that I see you all the time hula hooping. Um, I got into it actually getting over a heartbreak about four years ago and during COVID. So there were two things. I was trying to find my authentic self because I didn't really know deeply, deeply who I was. I was afraid to 
show up all the way of being too big or too much or too this or too that. So I was finding myself through like rediscovering and doing like a deep internal dive into my soul, <laughs> which I did for like a year and a half. I just kept evolving and evolving. And hula hooping was my expression and my way of like investigating where am I holding? Where am I free? And can I let myself move in ways that feel like flowy? Can I embody different parts of nature, play with balance? I was just like playing and experimenting with my body and rediscovering um, like who I am and how do I want to show up and um, how free can I be inside and out and like coming to that alignment because I, I wasn't aligned. I was, I was shrunken and insecure and ang I wasn't really anxious, but I was definitely insecure and I didn't love myself enough. So when you talk about alignment, because you make hula hooping look really easy, like it, it's <laughs> effortless. And what do you yeah. attribute that to? Because beyond practicing, right? When you talk about alignment, it's also transfers into when you're hula hooping, you're, you have to be in alignment in order for, yeah. I mean, you're, and it's, it's, it works. seems like an extension yeah. of yourself when I watch you. Yeah, that's how it feels. It feels like it's like part of me. <laughs> it's wild. It, it's like, I, I, so there's actually where I do kind of identify. I have like an over identification, I think with my hula hoop because, or multiple, I love them. And, um, I feel kind of naked without them. It's, it's interesting. Like I just do this all the time. I, I, I hula hooped until 1.30 in the morning last night, which is why my voice is a little bit hoarse because I teach people, I dance and teach and dance and teach. Um, but it's, it's an alignment that is through moving my focused attention. And it's like a meditation. So through moving my focused attention point to different areas of my body, I'm not in my head. I'm in my body. And then I can allow the flow to come through because it's just coming through. It's not orchestrated. I'm not, it's not choreographed. It's not, um, I don't, I just dance with the music. I listen to the music and I feel it and I let my body move that way. And it does come with a decent amount of practice though. And also I try to like, see how little can I move so that I can save energy and keep going. It, it, the reason I go so slow like that and why it's effortless is that, I mean, A, I've spent, you know, sometimes four five, six hours a day. Um, sometimes not at all, but if I'm hooping and, and I get into it, it's five or six hours and, and I, I enjoy mastering things. I enjoy, um, next level thing. Like anytime I master a skill, I see what's the next thing. Like, can I balance on one leg? Can I rotate my hips? Can I roller skate in hula hoop? Can I hang from a tree in hula hoop? Can I do a pull up in hula hoop? Like I will do anything. I like wave my flags and hula hoop. I add just the next level, the next level, just for the joy of it and the challenge and to see what's possible in our bodies. Cause I don't really know everything that's possible and I want to see. Oh, that's so great. And I also, I say not only like how you're hula hooping, but where you're hula hooping. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, that's I the say best hooping, part. Wherever you're hooping. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Whatever. I, I say both. I'm like, what's better? Cause some people might think basketball, but that's more hoops than hooping. Um, yeah. I, I make them so that I can travel on the plane and I take them all over the world, Mexico, Hawaii. Um, that's the only, those are the only places I've been, but I, I take them with me everywhere I go. And when I went to Mexico just now, I brought three hoops so that I can teach the teach other people on the beach or in town, wherever. And so share the it, actual, the, the hula hoops, you're, you're yeah. bringing it on. Do you check it on? Or no, do I, I make it them so they fit in the overhead. That's, I made it like that on purpose so that I can travel. Cause I can't, I can't not have it with me on vacation. It's my exercise on vacation. But it's, it's not like a, a tear apart kind of thing, right? I'm imagining no, like, I, do they collapses. have those? Where yeah, they have you? those. Yeah, okay. they make those. I make my own that collapses. I can make one and send it to you. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we need to know about this. So you've created a hula hoop. Yeah, I designed it myself. <laughs> and so are you, is this something that you're distributing? Because I want one. <laughs> I, I know, I need to I need to patent it actually. So I need to hurry up and do that. <laughs> More people are going to want it because it can be exercise on vacation. It can be your own mindfulness practice. It's a full spiritual practice. It's... It helps you see what you're thinking, how you're treating yourself, um, helps you deal with emotions, helps you come into that um, integrated alignment that's embodied. Like it's a really deep embodiment practice and that's why I love it and why I want other people to feel their own joy and feel their own, like the resonance of 
who they really are because it just comes out through hula hooping. So um, that's why I have to spread it around because people will love themselves more and then they'll love each other more. And that is the direction towards world peace. Well, it always starts with ourselves, right? It's like yeah. when we hear the quote about be the change you want to see in the world right. yeah. and that what you're doing to love what you're doing, it's going to be infectious. It's going yeah. to be contagious that yeah. others are going to catch on to that passion. And it, whether yeah. it's hula hooping or what, but it's more about whatever, however we show up in whatever gifts and uh, our creative aspects to share with the world. And that's what you're doing. Yeah. And that's why it makes it look so effortless because Thank it's you. And you're just having purpose. fun too. Yeah. Like making it fun. Cause I just think we don't have enough joy and fun in our lives. There's so much. That was the other thing I started getting into it for was like a counterbalancing to my work, which can be heavy and tiring. And so I needed, I've been cultivating on purpose, a joy practice. And so hula hooping is part of that. The wonderful thing too, I think that with the hula hooping, you've got to whittle your waist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's great exercise. It really is. It's like my core is, is tight. I didn't know that could happen. I mean, I've been in decent shape my whole life. I've also been 40 pounds overweight twice. So um, it's, it's, I mean, I'm 55 almost and I feel like I'm in better shape than I've been in a long time. I, I, I feel amazing. My legs have changed my body. I feel like I look like a dancer now, um, which I didn't used to have. Like I used to have to work really hard to look like this. And now I just have fun and I look like this. So, and I just want to like get better with age, like how much, how fit, how sexy, how joyous can I be? And it doesn't matter how old. Right. 50 plus, 60 plus, we're fabulous. No matter what yeah. age, cheers to that as well. Cheers to that, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you're, you noticed a difference in your legs too? I, I feel like yeah. menopause has really messed up my whole hormonal social, you know, like we talk about the belly fat for, that comes with hormonal imbalance. And I'm also really cognizant of my legs because I feel like yeah. those are the areas that I gain weight first. So tell me about the, so the physical benefits of hula hooping, mm -hmm. because we'll, we'll kind of dissect a little bit. So okay. not just whittling the waist, but you said your legs too. Yeah. My legs feel like they're like, well, because I do a lot of like deep, like almost like second position plie or like, you know, with your legs out, like a deep squat. Cause I like to see how low can I go before it hits my knees and falls down and like low and slow. So I get a good quad burn and it's, um, it's intense. And then I have to like jump out of that or like wiggle my feet so that I can come back together. Cause I work myself to exhaustion in my thighs. It's a workout. It's, you know, you can, you can make it be cardio. You can make it be more long-term. And if you use your arms and you get like, you know, shoulder action and you can do whatever you want, you know, like I've tried practicing yoga in there. <laughs> wow. Okay. Now that's a sight to see. I don't remember yeah. seeing that on one of your posts. I don't really post all that. Like I just post a few little things here and there, but I'm, I'm actually way more skilled than what I usually post. Cause I get, I get shy when I have a camera, but when it's just me doing my thing, I just, do whatever I want and have a blast. It's almost like, yeah, live out loud without worrying if anybody's watching. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they do, they like, they come over and they ask me, can I try it? Oh my goodness. You know, and I get to like watch them, like have their joy be re-sparked because they're like, I can do it. And it's like, it actually can be healing for people. I met a woman once at the beacon who said um, that it healed this. She didn't realize how, how much it healed her because she was sad and she had grief and she felt like, um, bad about herself that she couldn't hula hoop and then I taught her because I've taught like five or six hundred people now and she was like oh my god this healed this childhood wound and I didn't even know I had that and like she just gave me the hugest hug and was like crying and I mean it's really it's really powerful okay let's talk more about this it. okay wait 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 you just said healing yeah that has been a big focus of mine 2023 mm. has been all about project healing so when you're saying that you had somebody who said, this is helping me heal. So there's a, there is a mind body connection there for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So I notice how people talk to themselves. You can see, are they hard on themselves or are they not? And when they can like stay playful and joyous and like not feel bad about making mistakes because there really are no mistakes, just gravity happens. You're learning, you're a beginner because how you do one thing is how you do everything. 
So you can use it as a crucible to learn how do I talk to myself and like watch your thoughts. And when you have that negative thought, like, oh, I'm not good at this. I've never been good at this. And I can't do this. And they go into shame, actually. And, but then when they, like, I encourage them, like, no, stay kind in there. Watch your thoughts. You're doing great. You're learning. I've been doing this for years. You're not going to be like me. Don't try to be like me. You're trying to be you. Be more of you. And you're learning. Be soft, you know? So I coach them through and then I, I can tell what they're doing so that I can get them up to speed so that within like five minutes they have it. And then they're like, now they really have it and they can go and work it and enjoy it because they're not like struggling. And, um, and that just feels like, it's like when you learn to ride a bike or when you get up on a surfboard and you feel like, oh my goodness, I can do this. It's empowering. And that's why it's healing. Empowering. And you get to discover a part of yourself that you forgot or you didn't know. Right. I totally believe that too, that sometimes it, it's already in us. We may have just forgotten yeah. and it, just yeah. to be able to ignite that inner fire again. And it's yeah. what you were saying as far as the, you know, once you feel the confidence coming back as that skill set, it's not like you have to become this professional or champion. It's, it's, I, I see it in people. I mean, I know even myself when I get a few of the loops going, I feel really good. Like, okay, I got this. I got this. So that does have a great correlation about how we see ourselves. What are we saying to ourselves? What is that yeah. self-belief system that needs to change yeah. that everything is possible? Yeah. And no matter our body type. Not too old. Mm -hmm. Right. Body type, age, gender, none of that matters. It's mm -hmm. what's coming from inside right. of us. I'm too this, I'm too that, my hips are too small, my hips are too big, I don't have a waist. All the body image stuff comes up and um and then we just work through that and I just explain the physics to them and then they and then they get it. And it is probably one of those uh when you d provide instruction that it's going to take maybe one or two, three tries. Hey, if you can get it on the first try, but it's also finding that flow. You know, when you were talking about how it comes from the waist, it's core. It's core. And how yeah. much of your core has also improved. And that is where yeah. empowerment stems from. That is the origin yeah. of our personal power. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And so, like, I bring my attention to my core so that I'm actually coming from there. And then I, I engage it. So your core is engaged the entire time. Not, like, strangulated, but it is engaged enough that it's kind of, like, toned, like, almost as much as you would do in a push-up, And then you're pushing from that place because your body needs to be tight to be able to give that push to the hoop to make it move, to give the force and then centrifugal force. It really is just physics. So whenever people understand physics, they get it because um, people try to get all, women usually try to get all sexy and like that, you know, like they try to gyrate and it's really not gyration. It's, it's linear movement, forward and back, side to side, diagonal, doesn't matter. It's linear and that's the key. Oh, well, that's right there. I can tell you that what I was focusing on when I'm hula hooping is I'm just trying to keep it at my waist and I'm moving and probably forcing it to try to stay versus being in cohesive synergy with it. Yeah, you start moving it with it. You become, it becomes you. Yeah, you just start moving. The first time that I really realized I didn't have to work so hard and the biggest life lesson I got out of it, the first big life lesson I got out of there was when I was dancing in the backyard, waiting for some man to pick me up on a date. And it, he took like two hours later than I thought. So I was just really getting into my flow and some song came on and I, I was just dancing with the music as me, like how I wanted to dance. And the hoop kept going. And I kind of thought it would fall because I'm just dancing now. I'm not hooping, um, but it stayed. And that's how I do it now ever since. It's like, I'm just going to dance in here. I'm going to move how I want to move. And it will respond to my movements because I have my core tight and that's all I have to do. And then, um, but I found flow state and that was like so delicious that I'm always, I'm always seeking that because it feels so good to be in like deep flow state. And so the lesson was less trying and more being. I want to put an exclamation on that statement. <laughs> <laughs> What yeah. happened to your date that was two hours late? Um, I think I just had a miscommunication about He said he was coming after work and I, we didn't have like an exact time. He just said after work and he was almost done. And so I just thought he was coming around four, but it was like six. And 
it didn't matter. I was having the best time. I always just make the most of my time. It doesn't matter if I'm waiting or not. Yeah. So then it's not about like paying attention to, wait, he's running late. And what is yeah. like the mind games that we can play with ourselves? Like, yeah. you know, what is this going to happen? But Does you were mean, like, no, yeah. I'm focused on what I'm enjoying right now. I'm in my joy. Yeah. And just, then I'm in the backyard. Come on in. <laughs> it's a great lesson to be able to say, like, no matter what is happening, it's so hard for us. And, and we want to control the outcome. We want to control the conditions, right? And so being in that flow place and finding what you went to right away was like, well, I'm just going to start. <laughs> I'm going to hoop in and then I'm fine. So whatever happens and then your date shows up and, yeah, and then it I'm doesn't matter I'm how late. And feeling sexy and beautiful and it was great. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. So do you want to do a demonstration on... Do you have I could. Your, yeah, let me, I have a hoop in the garage. I have to go to the garage. So if you can pause for a second. Okay. <laughs> Here is my mindset when I start. I usually just kind of acclimate to the fact that I'm in my hoop and I get present with it. Take a breath. I ground my feet. I check in with my body and make sure I'm up for it because sometimes my knees or my hips or something doesn't want to do it. Make sure my bladder is empty, stuff like that. And then I just put it on my waist and the whole thing is like you put it against your back. And then you rotate your spine and then you just give it a solid push. Then you tighten your core and it's just a linear movement back and forth or side to side. But really I'm just moving my waist mostly. Your hips have a little bit. And then you can just start to play with, you know, like stuff like balance. It just looks like you're just dancing. It's wow. so natural for you. At some point, it becomes like you don't have to think about it, and you just have fun with it. When we we're out of our mind of like, and I don't mean like, when we stop thinking, and we just start being in that flow, like you do, like like you're, it's just so natural for you. And I guarantee you, if I were to try to do a demonstration, it would not look so effortless. Well, it takes time. <laughs> it's I mean, nobody, you know, it takes time. And I've been doing this for like four years for hours a day. So it's, um, nobody's like that. I wasn't like this in the beginning either. So don't let that be what stops you. You'll find your own way. Well, that's in everything. Everything we do. Yeah. It's exactly. not a, okay, just to, we're expecting to have this perfection or this expertise overnight. It's one mm -hmm. day, one step, one effort at a time. No Absolutely. failure. If we're yeah, working towards it consistently, yeah. being persistent and mm -hmm. allowing for like, okay, that didn't work, but this does. And what a great way to like see that as that correlation of life. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Nothing is instantaneous and anything worth doing takes time. And there's a reason why I'm this good and effortless at it is because I've spent so much time mastering it and um, and it's, a, it's been a fun journey. Like there's, it can just be like, it's okay to be a beginner and it's okay to not know what you're doing and, and find your way and experiment with how do you want to move and you can get to know yourself better through this. So, but a lot of people get frustrated, but like, why is it so easy for you? And why can't I do it like that? And because you haven't spent the time and it's totally, open. there's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame. It just, it takes time. And that's part of the part of the journey of anything and like enjoying the ride and not trying to just get there, you know, like let it be a experimentation and, and a joyous one at that, because why not? It's hula hooping, you know, you're not trying to be, what is the goal? You know, <laughs> the goal is to have fun and enjoy being in your body. Yeah. That's great. That's it. Yeah. Because it's not about the destination. It's the journey. Yeah, there's no destination with this. <laughs> And just like anything, when you were saying, I'm doing the yoga with my, my hoop. And, and that's also never, yoga is never told as a, uh, you know, you're not an expert at it. It's a lifelong practice. But it's also what you said about stretching the boundaries of what can your body do next. Mm -hmm. I think once we start having the thought that like, as soon as you start, as soon as I start saying to myself, I'm too old to fill in the blank. It's a dead end. I shut that avenue off and I just think, no, there is no too old. And so 
if I want to do it, I will do it. And it doesn't matter how old I am. I'm actually stronger, more capable, more adventurous, more confident than I've ever been. And so there's nothing stopping me from doing whatever I truly want to do. Um, you know, like roller skating. I picked up roller skating a couple years ago, which you might think, huh, at this age, really? Um, maybe, I mean, there's, a, I don't try, I try not to risk my life in them because I need my arms for work. But otherwise, if it's safe, I will try it. I can't fall like hardcore. So I don't do like double black diamonds and jump off things. And I don't try to do like backflips off of anything. Um, I will dive into a pool and I'll flip off a diving board. I'll flip on a trampoline, but I will not do it where I can like land hard and hurt myself. And again, it's I think more about how you're pragmatic and not that you wouldn't take the risk. It's just, why would I take a risk when I know that this is part of my you know, the evolution of your personal physical boundaries. And just like anything in life is that you give it a try and that there's no guarantee, right? There's no guarantee in life. But if you were to at least take that first step and that effort. Yeah. Yeah. And then we kind of start shrinking and and dying. Like I just, I kind of had a realization in my mid forties that that I, I started thinking I'm over the hill and like now I'm on this little downhill towards death and I'm just going to like, now I might get, you know, I'll gain weight. I'll just be less active and I'm just sliding into death and just kind of waiting or something. <laughs> and then I was like, no, no, not doing that. Um, how can I, how can I get better with age and how can this be what would happen if, cause we don't have to, I don't have to do this. I don't want to do this. I want to do this, you know? And regardless of our age, it's, it's that when the sooner that you can probably anyone yeah. who understands that um, if you're feeling stuck or unmotivated or feeling whatever depressed, lost, it is because your soul's saying it's time for a change. It's time for something new and different to step outside of your comfort zone. And even with yeah. divorce, as you were sharing, you know, to be comfortable with the uncomfortable so that almost seems to be like for me if that's uh something you know when i started this podcast you know how is this i've never done a podcast before but you start doing it and every time gets a little bit better you know like watch me in more 100 episodes then <laughs> yeah yeah and Versus, so that's how it is it's a journey yeah yes and with your Pooping and with all the followers you have. So how, how do we find you so that all of us who are inspired can watch oh. your progress and, and be able to pick up our own hula hoop? Yeah, absolutely. So it's just Dr. Dr. Caitlin Hoops. And that's what I am on um, Instagram and then Facebook, just Caitlin Hoops, C-A-I-T-L-I-N. It'll be in the thing below. Um, and so that's all I really have so far. I'm going to create a podcast as well, but I'm not sure when that's happening. Um, and I don't know what I'm going to call that, but it'll be in my, one of those links and, um, I'm doing a TEDx talk, which I'm working on about hula hooping and like the benefits. And I'm going to start with mostly the, um, mental, emotional, physical, the spiritual benefits will have to be on a separate podcast because it, or a separate talk, because it's just very high level. And I want to start people at the beginning. So I will be doing some videos that will on my Instagram I'll do some things to help people learn like getting off the ground and getting out of your head and seeing how you talk to yourself and just kind of what I do with people on the street or in the nightclub or on the beach when I teach them I'll just start creating some videos that are for beginners and um because we can just stay kind to ourselves and like get over that beginner hump so that you can develop enough skill to see if it's like what you want to do or not and there are other flow state things too and so that's all available well what I love is that you're even just having it in your mind to manifest it that you're like i'm gonna have a ted talk you're and you're gonna do that and then even as you're doing you're thinking about your podcast yeah i think it's all gonna tie in together and my message is getting more and more clear as i have a lived experience with it and i see what's really relevant because there's what's relevant to me but there's what's relevant to an audience who's like just beginning because i'm four years down the road and so it's a little bit hard to track back to like what would i have needed to know at the beginning because most people are not professional hula hoopers on the side <laughs> well, and what you so, just said is that you're, is your work in progress, right? It, you know, you yeah. have this wonderful gift of hooping, but also that you don't have to have the answers right now, but 
being in the flow continually will give you inspiration and more clarity yeah. as you know like that was one thing that i always learned um to really be productive isn't about so much about what you're completing because it's like do those tasks that are less likely to be um or do what you feel really good about first and be in that joy of what you're doing in that moment because it will stir up who you really are your beingness so that whatever task yeah un you know unfortunate or unpleasant is going to be that much easier uh-huh that makes sense yeah waiting to be motivated has never worked for me i've had to just be like i'm going to do the thing the motivation will come later through the doing and then i enjoy it but if i can just get over my little hiccup of like get your headphones on and bring your hula hoop outside like or i don't usually have a hiccup there but like going to the gym when i used to do that um i just had to make myself go because i had to have a partner or somebody who told me accountable otherwise i would have let myself off the hook so <laughs> yeah well caitlin thank you so much for being on in a prosecco i think what you're doing is so inspiring and thank you for that perspective too about divorce is when you really start to experience empty nesting for the first time because it, it not without the label but there's different experiences i love your attitude of like no this i'm not an empty nester i just have to be in this stage of life where now i have the freedom to do whatever i want yeah yeah and having all those possibilities it's so beautiful i mean it just is i feel like my whole life is blooming i feel like i'm blooming and following the flow and learning how to follow the flow and stay in it and recognize when I'm not in the flow because I'm not always. And so I've got tools and techniques to bring myself back to that centered, grounded place thanks to hula hooping. And so I'm really grateful to my teacher, Natalie, uh, who's a brilliant, brilliant hooper. Um, and she inspired me. And so then I'm just inspiring more people and spreading it around. So thank you for having me and for this opportunity to share my message and my perspectives on things because it feels great. Well, I'm inspired by you. I definitely want to pick up a hula hoop and keep doing what you're doing. Be who you are. I love this. And so cheers to you. Thanks for joining. And all of you out there listening, viewing this, cheers to you too. And we'll check, we'll check in again for the next episode. Cheers. If you enjoyed this episode of In a Prosecco, be sure to subscribe so you're notified when a new episode is posted. Rate and review the show, and please do comment and share ideas for topics that are important to you. A friend who cares is a friend who shares. Here's a toast to you on your re-inspirement journey. Cheers. <laughs>